In studio with New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. You got anything you're promoting? Any appearances coming up? Uh, I'll be going to the World Mystery Convention at the end of this month in Nashville. BoucherCon, named after Anthony Boucher. Mr. Harvey, Matt Harvey, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney. Good morning. And via telephone, Sam Petsonk, who's been on the program before. He is the West Virginia representative to the National Democratic National Committee. Sam, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Rob, and, and, and John and Matt. Good being with you guys. You sound energized and enthused, Sam. Any reason for that? Well, I'm joyful as uh, as well. <laughs> you may have heard, Rob. Yes. We have, uh, you know, uh, I care a great deal, like all of us do, about our the, the direction our country is headed. And uh, it's been so much doom and gloom for so many years. We had COVID. We had, the, you know, massive economic contraction and, and, and then the, the consequent inflation and everybody's been struggling. I got kids in, you know, I'm, I'm Keep in child care. My wife and I work. We're up to our eyeballs just trying to cover our bills. And, uh, yeah, it really has been a breath of fresh air. I think the last couple of weeks here, it seems like there's maybe an opportunity to unify as a country, maybe focus on something more happy and uh, hopeful. So uh, it gives me, it puts a smile on my face. Tell me about Governor Tim Walz. And uh, obviously you think that he was the right choice uh, as the VP, you and I texted. I really thought that uh, Vice President Harris would go the Pennsylvania route because the Pennsylvania is very much in play and Minnesota generally can be counted on as a solid Democratic uh, uh, batch of electoral votes. But you said, nope, this guy, he's the right choice. Why was that? Well, he's a command sergeant major. He's a public school teacher. He's a state champion football coach. You know, he was the uh, he was a fact. He was not only a football coach. He was the advisor to the Gay Straight Alliance back when that was a hard thing to do as a high school coach. Uh, he, he has been a successful congressman. He's been a successful governor, getting free school lunch to Minnesota kids and really setting an example about literally building bridges uh, between uh, you know with the uh, Wisconsin and and Minnesota. I think that is uh, the kind of record of uh, just normal, useful uh, work on behalf of the American people that we wanted to uh, clearly president vice president Harris wanted to uh, highlight those values. And uh, frankly, it's been a long time. Uh, it's been since Bill Clinton that we had a, um, you know, a, a rural uh, leader on the national ticket for um, the Democratic Party. And I have been very involved in the uh, Bush administration, you know, when Bush was president, when Obama was president, trying to elevate rural policy, trying to elevate the profile of states like ours that have very different types of needs from the more urban states. And, um, and hallelujah, I think president, uh, Vice President Harris really recognized the need to bring back that rural focus. Uh, she came to West Virginia, uh, well, virtually during COVID, uh, very early on in her term, to try to reach out and understand about our unique development needs. And I think the selection of walls really commits to the entire nation. The Democratic Party is here uh, for all of us. Sam, I, I think the vice presidential selection gets way more hype than it deserves when it's taking place considering the person rarely moves the needle that much when it comes to who you're going to vote for for president. I've, For instance, when I voted for president, I'm 61, so I've voted for several of them over the years. The vice president has never influenced who I vote for uh, in that election. And then once the election is over and the president is sworn in for another term or a new term, we almost never hear about the vice president again uh, during those next four years. Why do you think this selection gets so much hype? Well, um, two reasons. First of all, uh, look at what has just happened with the nomination process for the president of the United States. Uh, the vice president really does matter. Uh, things can change with your president for a whole variety of reasons, and the vice president is just a heartbeat away. So it does matter a great deal. But I think the, re the second reason, other than the succession-type scenario that we are basically experiencing right now, you know, the second reason is um, I think, Rob, that uh, 
I, I just listened to that segment you did with with the author of the uh, the game the Olympics book. It was so fascinating. It, I really applaud all of you for uh, the way you engaged with him, and and he talked about um, how things could have developed differently so that a, a Holocaust did not come about. And he and you know I think of. Uh, the the Marshall Plan is the way we rebuilt Europe after the after the Great War. It, it, we had all these great ideas that came too late, and uh, w- the thing that's so important about the vice president uh, is not so much in their own right, but what it, what the ideas they bring to the presidency itself. And Tim Walls, like Steve Williams in West Virginia, and uh, Bill Peduto in in Pittsburgh, uh, he is a. So many mayors and governors of rural states or smaller cities around this country have focused on the need for a Marshall Plan for the American heartland, and I think that is a core idea that Walls is bringing to Harris. And I think you'll see her talk about that more. I think you will see her focus on you know uh, planning to protect and rebuild. Uh, our entire nation, uh, which has been neglected by by uh, you know decades of of presidents at this point, so I think it's important in that way. I really think her choice of walls reflects what the ideas she's going to focus on, and that that's pretty important. And and it's important for these for these historic reasons that you know what we focus on as a country affects the the course we take as as a nation and as a as a global community, for better or worse. John Gilstrap. <clears throat> Everybody gets a victory lap, right? And and I don't, and I congratulate you and your party on, on having made a decision. Um, there's, and there's always going to be a bit of gaslighting that goes on, ignoring the fact that Kamala Harris was the lowest rated candidate in 2020. Where are we now? 24. Um, we, we forget about ignoring the border. We forget about defund the police. We forget about letting Minneapolis burn. We forget about, uh, Waltz's daughter actually tweeting the plan not to bring in the, the, the national guard. We forget about getting rid of fracking. We forget about, you know, all the, all of these things. And I, and I guess that's fine. Um, and it will come out. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll come out. Well, this is, it'll come out in the campaigning. Second, John, I mean, you, you forget about. You, it's not going to be forgotten I, the, about, obviously. The border, but but wait a second. We have we are producing more oil now than we did under Trump. There that were, doesn't uh, matter. That doesn't. She still said she's going to end fracking, which that, employs well, a lot of people in Pennsylvania. But there. But 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 the point is that doesn't mean we're ending industrial jobs. And she it did not say she's going to end fracking. You want to hear I, the I quote? What, well, well, well. Look, the point is, it's not about the technology. What we need is a plan for the future, and and jobs evolve, and more people are employed, and more people benefit. That's what's actually happening under President Biden. So I don't know what quote you have, but but uh, you know you can't say that we that the oil and gas industry is worse under Democrats because just. Quantitatively, it's better. It's that we've got more production under Democrats because of re- just striking a responsible balance. So I just want to push back on that, you know, as well as the border. She's got, I mean, Justice tweeted the other day, Harris intercepted 350 uh, uh, foreign nationals or Chinese, I think, uh, uh, terrorists at the border. I mean, it, how is that a hit on her? We have been succeeding. We have been blocking the dangerous immigration and promoting a responsible path to citizenship. So her record on both of those things is really strong if you don't forget the facts. So I just want to push back on that for a second. I, and, and of course you're going to push back, but you're, but the facts are the facts. The report just came out last week. And I don't, this is, I'm not running for office here, right? And I'm not, yeah. I don't represent right. a party here. Um, but there is gaslighting going on. And, and I, I think that's great. You have to overcome the fact that Kamala Harris was widely disregarded as, as a presidential candidate. She quit before the, the, uh, the primaries, actually. And when she was selected as Biden's uh, vice president, there was a great gasp of, oh, my God, please don't let anything happen to, to Joe Biden. And now, you know, there's this, this great effort to pump her up to be something that she's not. She she's just h- hanging in the bunker. She's taken, you know, his his playbook of don't give any interviews and let the press do it for me. And this will all come out in the wash. Maybe she will come out and 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 
Is there, is there a question here, Senator? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just there's there's a lot of I just kind of want to be the counterbalance here of of um, why won't you do interviews, Sam? Let's start with that one. OK, thank you. Hey, but you're giving me the chance and God love you guys. Like, I really respect the dynamic on this show. I want to say that John and Matt and Rob. I mean, this is so essential for democracy. So but, you know, the reason that Kamala Harris is generating so much energy and packed crowds when Trump can barely, you know, draw a, 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 a you know, a, a fill, a, a fill a room is that she has a record now as a national leader. She succeeded as a senator. She succeeded as a uh, attorney general. She succeeded as a prosecutor. And uh, she succeeded at pulling herself up from her bootstraps, working at McDonald's and raised by a single mom in California. Now she has succeeded in rebuilding America's infrastructure as vice president and she's contrasting that record of success and leadership and uni unity against this um, you know this really weird anger and corruption of the failing businessmen on the other side we got failing billionaires like Trump and justice who are living paycheck to paycheck talk about trying to keep up with their crumbling business empires taking running for government to try to save their own tails it's the least american thing i mean talk about make it i mean if you want making america great does not mean running for government to save your own failing business uh, empire you know b bailing out your business by dealing with the saudis i was glad you guys brought up the the live P, you know, tournament. I mean, the Greenbrier is right at the heart of that. How are we going to send people to the White House or to the U.S. Senate when they are bought off by the Saudis, by our by our enemies? I mean, it's it not only is it corrupt, it's frightening for America's foreign policy when our elected leaders could wind up literally financially indebted to our adversaries. And so that's the contrast the American people are seeing loud and clear with Harris. And, um, you know, up and down the ticket, uh, we're getting energy. People say we don't want this weird anger and corrupt business from just Jim Justice. We don't want it from Donald Trump. We want to see walls and Harris and hope and joy and opportunity and freedom. So that's I, I'm feeling that. I, I mean, what do you guys think? I think it's Matt Harvey's turn to ask a question. Yeah. I was expecting, uh, well, good morning, Mr. Petsonk. So I was expecting her to announce Josh Shapiro as her running mm -hmm. mate. And it, uh, you know, I'm not a Democrat. I'm in the Republican Party. And it just appeared to me that there's, there's not really a path for, to win for the Democrats that doesn't involve securing Pennsylvania. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, why she chose Governor Walls over Governor Shapiro? Well, I think she said, uh, you know, a couple of things. First of all, the party has needed to realign itself with its rural working class democratic base. Uh, and and I think she intuitively understood that. And she used the word chemistry. She She felt that Walls was bolstering her both you know personally and policy wise i think in areas that she understands i mean she, she came to west virginia she did this wonderful uh series of of uh interviews it was by zoom during COVID. but right at the beginning of the Biden administration she knew back then personally i mean the vice president made it her initiative to reach out and talk about uh, uh you know economic redevelopment diversification she understood that the structural challenges that we face with uh, our um, our uh, structural decline in the coal, our depletion of our coal reserves. I mean, we're running out of fossil fuels in West Virginia. Uh, our, we peaked in our coal production back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and we've been down ever since. She understood all of those sort of long-term needs to refocus on the heartland of America. So, you know, I think I think she got that, uh, and I believe that's what she was telling people. You know, and, you know look, um, Pennsylvania is a part of that, but it's, it, you know, uh, Walls' life story is like a personification of how we do better if, if for uh, working Americans. Reduce the cost of child care, reduce the cost of health care, protect our, uh, you know, the, the, the basic social fabric like the GI Bill that gave him a shot at a better life. 
And uh, so, you know, uh, Shapiro is a great leader. He's a great governor, uh, but he's been in government his whole life. I mean, he his first job, as I understand it, was working for a congressman in Jersey. And uh, he's a sharp lawyer. He's a great attorney general. I know him. I got to know him during my run for attorney general, and he was supportive of me. So I feel very grateful to him. But I think that the, the narrative of Walls' life just met the moment. That's my read. Hey, Sam, give us a peek behind the curtain. When The selection process itself for the vice president, um, ultimately it's her, her decision. But were you, people in your position as vice chair of the Democratic Party, do you have input? Do they reach out to party chairs? Or are you as, you just sitting on the outside and watch it? How does that work? Do you know? Well, I'm one of just a couple hundred uh, Nash, uh, DNC members nationally, and in fact, I, you know, the, I, I, I will be starting it uh, in two weeks here as the new class of DNC members is inducted, and so you know, that's a she speaks to. Uh, I didn't obviously speak to you know the Harris uh, Vice President Harris or or anybody from the campaign about it, but w- we do have a uh, process for providing input to the DNC and uh, through our candidates and through our state um, uh, directors and state party folks, they're in constant communication with the Harris campaign. So we have been giving a lot of feedback through those channels. And this is why the Democratic Party process is so important, why I'm so involved with it is, you know, there really is an orderly decision-making process to reflect the will of the American people. And we saw that happen. And like I say, it's a stark contrast between the corruption and the failed businesses uh, of the of the billionaires on the Republicans. And hey, Matt, I hear you. And I appreciate the, the Republican tradition. My grandpa, uh, you know, was a Republican in West Virginia. Uh, I've got a lot of Republican family members who were in it because uh, uh, they believed in freedom and opportunity for small businesses. But that is the Republican Party of the past. I mean, I think that what what the input that we gave to the Harris campaign as West Virginia Democrats was, uh, you know, we need a, a vision of freedom and opportunity for the future, and, uh, and Walls represents that. Sam, the accusations of stolen valor have uh, been in the news the last uh couple of days here, or the last day at least anyway, and even on our comment section in Facebook, where the debate is going on right now over the quote, and uh, it was just posted here, uh, just give me a second to flip back up to it, uh, the quote says, we can make sure those weapons of war that I carried in war are only carried in war. That's the quote that right now is creating a lot of a discussion, not uh, just on our Facebook page, but uh, across the country as well with uh, J.D. Vance saying that that's stolen valor. What do you make of that quote, Sam, and your thoughts on the stories regarding his experience with the military? Um, Well, you know, I I don't know the context for that quote, but what I know is what uh, Governor Walls has said, which is he served 24 years in the Army National Guard, not as a combatant, but as a, uh, you know, an example of the... uh, service that the Guard represents, teachers, ordinary business people across America, he has gone to great lengths to explain what the Guard actually is, and it's not a combat force. He's done more than probably any uh, living American to explain the non-combatant uh, work that the Guard has done, and, and, and you know, his... Heck, it's not an accident. He was assigned as a rank, as the uh, you know the ranking member of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs. He was the lead sponsor of the Clay Hunt Suicide Prevention for American Veterans Act, and that you know he has partnered with uh, veterans groups successfully to uh, ensure veteran mental health care and suicide prevention programs. Hey guys, yeah, I, I mean. This hits home for me. Some of my close friends have benefited from uh, those services at the, you know, across West Virginia. Uh, we've got a lot of vets who have been in combat, and Walls has made their lives better using the power uh, of that position, uh, you know, as a lead sponsor for that much, much needed suicide prevention initiative. So, you know, that's his record. That's all he's claimed. I don't know the context for that quote, but, you know, J.D. Vance is. Uh, has made his political brand 
trashing others, putting others down. If you read Hillbilly Elegy, it, I mean, it is, it is an embarrassment of denouncing his own people and, and blaming people for, for these structural problems that have held back our part of the country for decades. He's doing, Vance is doing the same thing now, picking some quote out of context, trying to besmirch the reputation of one of the most decorated veterans and leaders for veterans in this country, which is, which is Tim Walls. So, I mean, I really, you know, that's a sad example of the weird anger and the political gamesmanship that I think, uh, I think Americans are done with. Got one minute I, I left. Really, Matt, make yeah. it a quick question, Matt. Uh, Sam, I was going to ask you how the now Harris Walls campaign, ha if it has any effect on statewide and down ballot races in West Virginia. Yes, big time. Trump has been polling between 55 and 59 percent of support in West Virginia before Biden dropped out of the race. I haven't seen any polls since then, but nationally we've seen Trump has lost five or six points. Uh, even if you assume those polls are undercounting Trump's support, uh, Harris and Walls have turned this race around. Trump may or may not still win West Virginia, but the enthusiasm is a game changer. Down ballot where people know the candidates better. They always vote for the local candidates more uh, strongly than they vote for the, for the opposing party at the federal level. So down ballot, we will see much tighter races. And as more people choose the Democratic column, uh, if that federal race gets one, two, three, four, five points tighter, it's going to make our down ballot candidates successful in West Virginia, and it should because our party is exciting people, is, is providing hope for the future, reducing the cost of child care, helping people actually take a dollar home at the end of the month. And Lord knows, you know, you can't erase the crushing cost of child care with a pilly little tax cut, like, like respectfully, like the GOP is trying to do in West Virginia. Sam, Those things don't make a difference. On that note, our time is up. I thank you for yours, sir. Have a great day. You guys, too. God love you. Final minute coming up next.